pH is where we're going to spend the majority of our time because we really want to break down what's going on inside of the solution. And the pH is going to help us figure out the amount of H plus, the amount of OH minus that are bouncing around and reacting in, the solu in, in our beakers. So what exactly is pH? pH is used to determine the H plus concentration in a solution. Okay, And the actual formula for it is pH is equal to negative log of H plus. So in reality, we're going to use this little P symbol a lot. This little P always stands for negative log. Okay, So whether it be pH, pOH, pKa, pKb, whatever it happens to be, it's always going to be negative log of something. Okay, So in the case of pH, it's the negative log of the H plus concentration. Just a note. The H plus will be a small number, like a times 10 to the negative something, because it does not require a lot in the solution to actually act like an acid or a base. Okay, so we're looking for very tiny uh, numbers for the H plus concentration or OH minus. Typically, uh, pH will be in the range of 1 to 14. So that's what the range was when you were back in uh, middle school or elementary school when you first talked about pH was in 1 to 14. However, it can be a number that's greater than 14 and a number that's less than 1. Okay, because if you have a very concentrated solution, something like a 6 molar solution, the negative log of 6 molar is actually a negative a number. So you can actually get a value that's less than 1. Just a reminder, if your pH is less than 7, your substance is going to be acidic. If your pH is equal to 7, your substance is neutral. And if your pH is greater than 7, then your substance is deemed, quote, basic. Okay? Now, it doesn't mean it's an acid, and it doesn't mean it's a base. It just means that it has acidic or basic properties. So you don't have to copy this chart down, uh, but this chart gives you an idea of some everyday substances and where, they're p where they fall on the pH scale. So you can see here battery acid, which happens to be sulfuric acid extremely concentrated, about 12 molar usually, uh, falls at a pH that's less than zero, so it actually has a negative pH. Gastric fluid, meaning stomach acid, is HCl, that's about one. Lemon juice, which is um, citric acid or sorbic acid, is just above a two. Carbonated beverages like soda are two and a half, so you can see as they start to build, where the, there's a lot of acid and everything, that, and a lot of stuff that we drink. Basically, if it's bitter, then it's going to be an acid. Orange juice, vinegar, beer, coffee, etc. Egg yolks, hopefully you're not eating egg yolks, pure egg yolks to find out whether or not they're, um, like if they have a bitter taste. Uh, blood has a pH of about just above seven and that's mostly because most of our world is acidic. So we need something that's slightly basic so that our blood will balance it. Uh, we won't get, our bodies won't get too acidic. Um, Milk of magnesia is what they give you when you're not feeling well. It calms your stomach. Household ammonia, very toxic to the nose, just above 11. Bleach, about 13. Household lie. Lie is that stuff, if you've ever seen Fight Club, the part where Brad Pitt grabs Edward Norton's hand, kisses his hand, and then pours that powder on top and it starts to um, bubble. That's lie. Okay. Um, obviously, movie magic, so you don't believe that. That doesn't really happen. Now, PA, POH is the opposite to pH. Now, what you have to remember is there is always a little bit of OH minus in an acid, and there's always a little bit of H plus in a base, which is why we're able to calculate the pH for a base, and we can calculate the POH for an acid. So the POH, just like pH, is equal to the negative log, again, that negative log, of the OH minus concentration. pH and POH are opposites to each other. So what we find is the pH plus the pOH is equal to 14. Or H plus times the OH minus concentrations is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. This number here is also called Kw, has the symbol Kw. Kw is the water dissociation constant, and we'll talk about Ks later when we talk about like the acid dissociation constant, base dissociation constant. But Kw is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14, and that's equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus. Here's what you need to remember. Not only, well, these two formulas will appear on the equation sheet, it's not a big deal, but what you need to remember are these two facts here. A strong acid, the concentration of a strong acid is equal to the H plus concentration, and the concentration of the strong base is equal to the OH minus concentration. 
how to actually use the pH calculations in both a chart and some actual word problems. Now you find a chart like this, just like in your in your homework, and just an FYI, you'll probably find something like this on an assessment of some major importance down the road. Hint, hint. So anyway, there are four formulas that we need to use for this problem. There is the pH equals the negative log of the H plus concentration. There's the pOH is equal to the negative log of the OH minus concentration. You have the pH plus the pOH is equal to 14. And you have the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus is equal to 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14. So those four formulas are what's going to help us solve this problem. So it doesn't really matter which one you use first, like which of the squares you you solve first. Obviously, you can't do acidic or basic until after you find the pH. So I tend to just go from left to right. So since they give me the H plus concentration, I'm going to find the OH minus first. So if I want to go from H plus to OH minus, the easiest way is to use this formula here. So I take 1.0 times 10 to the negative 14 and divide by my H plus concentration, which is 6.4 times 10 to the negative 6. Go to my handy dandy calculator. Oops. And take 1.0, negative 14, divided by 6.4, second E to negative 6. And I get 1.56 times 10 to the negative 9. Okay. Now, since I'm in the concentration of OH minus right now, I'm just going to do negative log of that number. And that's going to give me my pOH, which is going to be 8.81. And I'm going to do 14 minus the pOH to give me my pH, which is 5.19. Okay. Um, now, people always ask me, what's the correct number of significant figures, Mr. Siegel? Sig figs really don't come into play that much in ascents and bases. My recommendation is to always keep three sig figs. Um, it's not always possible, depending on the numbers that they give us, but you try and do the best that you can. But you need a minimum of two, and I would say usually with pH, you want to go two places past the decimal as much as possible. So is this acidic or basic? Well, obviously the pH is less than, four, uh, is less than seven, so therefore this must be acidic. Let's do the next one. So I've got to solve for the H plus concentration from the OH minus. So I'm going to take 1 second E to the minus 14 and divide by 8.8 .8 second E to the minus 5. And I get 1.14 times 10 to the minus 10th. Okay, so again, since that number is the number that's sitting in my calculator right now, I'm going to just go negative log second answer. Oops, I missed. Second answer. And I get 9.94, and 14 minus 9.94 is 4.05, 6. So I get 9.94. 4.06. This is a number that's greater than 7, so therefore it must be basic. Now these next two, because I can do the basic math in my head, I'm just going to do 14 minus 3.2, which is obviously 10.8 to give me 14. And 3.2 is obviously less than 7, so this must also be an acidic solution. So now, this is where people usually mess up. This is where people have the most problems, is turning pH or pOH back into H plus and OH minus. So here's the thing. So to go from H plus to, OH, to pH is negative log of the H plus concentration. To go the other way requires the inverse log. And the way to get the inverse log is you go second log. And that gives you 10 to the button. So you shouldn't see this 10 to the um, symbol appear on your calculator. Then you type in negative th and your pH. And when you do that, you get 6.31 times 10 to the negative 4. And then while I'm here, I'm going to calculate my OH minus 
concentration, which is 1 times 10 to the negative 14, divided by the H plus concentration, and I get 1.58 times 10 to the negative 11. So it's 6.31 times 10 to the negative 4, and 1.58 times 10 to the negative 11. I think I messed those up. Nope. And 1.58 times 10 to the negative 11. Okay, 14 minus 12.9 is 1.10. And to solve, again, I go second log, which gives me the 10 to the negative. Now, I always do it based on the number that's given in the problem, okay? So I don't like to do it on my calculated numbers because what if I made a mistake? Now everything's messed up. So I do it on the number they gave me, which is 12.9. So that means that my OH minus concentration is 1.26 times 10 to the negative 13, and then I go 1 second E to the minus 14 divided by second answer, and I get 0 0.079. So it's 1.26 times 10 to the negative 13, and 0 0.079. Obviously, this number is much less than 7, so this is acidic. Okay, so this is a nice basic way to practice how to use the different four form, uh, the four different formulas. Now let's actually do it in context to solutions. So they want me to find the pH of a 1.8 times 10 negative 4 molar HBr solution. Well, HBr is a strong acid, and the concentration of the strong acid is going to be equal to the concentration of the H plus. So 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4 is my H plus. So this problem will read pH is equal to the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative 4. Whip out that handy dandy calculator. Let's clear all that garbage out of there. Go negative log 1.8 second E negative 4 Shabam, 3.74. Okay. Now it wants me to find the H plus of 1.02 grams of HNO3 in 250 milliliters of solution. Well, now I actually have to determine the molarity. This is a strong acid. It's one of my seven strong. So when I find the molarity of this acid, that will be the molarity of my H plus. And that's all they're really asking for in this problem. So let's do a mole conversion. one mole on the top, and the weight of HNO3 on the bottom, which would be 48 plus 14.01 plus 1.01 is 63.02. And 1.02 divided by Oops. Divided by second answer is 0 0.0162. And take the 0 0.0162 moles, divide by 0 0.250 liters because it's molarity. And I get 0 0.0647. Molarity is equal to the concentration of H plus. Okay, so now it wants me to calculate the pH of a 3.5 times 10 to the 4 molar strontium hydroxide solution. Well, strontium hydroxide is a strong base. Okay, so since it's a strong base, the concentration of the base is equal to the concentration of OH minus in the solution. But there's one little trick to this, and the trick is right there. So I don't have 3.5 times 10 to the negative 4 molarities of OH minus here because there are two OHs. Little trick, okay? So um, so I actually have to double it because there's two of them. If, there was, if, if it was something like sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH, then it'd just be the same thing. But because there's two in the hydroxide, I actually have twice as many OH minuses in solution as I do um, a normal problem, as I do the total compound. So now my molarity, and this is equal to my OH minus 
concentration. So if I take the negative log of that, that gives me pOH. So I'm going to take the negative log of 7.0 times 10 to the negative 4. Negative 4. And I get 3.15 and 14 because I asked for the pH. 14 minus that number is the p uh, it will be the pH. So this is 3.15 and then 14 minus 3.15 is equal to 10.85 and that's my pH. Now, here's the thing about these problems before I do the last one. Lots of red warning lights should go off in your head as you are solving these problems because strontium hydroxide is a strong base. So people like, they look at this and go, oh, negative log, I'll just take the negative log of it, that will give me my pH, and they'll get an answer of 3.15, and they'll circle it, and they'll stop. And I'll say, but strontium hydroxide is a strong base. And if it's a base, it must have a pH greater than 7. So if I got 3.15 as my answer, I would know immediately that I'm wrong, and that red warning light should go off in my head. That's how I know I have to do one more step to get myself a pH that's greater than 7. I got 10.85. That's a pH greater than 7. Therefore, I must have done this hopefully correctly because at least I'm in the right range. Now let's solve the last one. It wanted me to solve the pOH of 1.50 grams of lithium hydroxide in 250 milliliters of solution. Lithium hydroxide is a strong base. So when I find the concentration of it, that will be equal to the concentration of OH minus. And lithium hydroxide is 16 plus 1.01, is, is, um, which is 17.01. The mental math is failing me right now. Plus 6.94, so the weight of lithium, is 23.95. Okay, so I take 1.50 divided by second answer is 0 0.0626 moles. To find the molarity, which will be the molarity of the OH minus, and I take 0 0.0626 divided by 0.250. because I have to convert to molarity, and I always divide by the liters of solution, divided by 0 0.250 is 0 0.25125 251 molar. Okay, now that's just the OH minus concentration. They want me to solve for the pOH. So the pOH is equal to the negative log of the OH minus concentration, which is 0 0.251. Now, because this is a base, I would expect my pOH to be a low number. And I get 0 0.601. Is 0 0.601 a small number? Yes, it is. Therefore, hopefully, I did it correctly. Uh, if not, at least I'm in the right ballpark. And that's how to calculate pH, pOH, concentrations, etc. of different acids.